Hello, my name is Paul Rosenberg, and I am a professor in the Department of Endodontics at NYU College of Dentistry. I'm also an author of many articles, chapters, and a new textbook titled Endodontic Pain. It is focused on endodontic pain and its causes, diagnosis, prevention, and management. Providing treatment for intra-visit endodontic emergencies is an essential part of practice. I'd like to take a moment to describe a predictable approach to management of those emergencies. The intra-visit emergency strategy has several components. First, it's important for the clinician not to rush into treatment before understanding the biologic cause of the problem. We then select the appropriate intervention. There is one simple goal for an emergency visit, get the case under control. That means get the patient out of pain as soon as possible. We will be focusing on vital exacerbations. Non-vital exacerbations are related but have some degree of difference. The vital exacerbation is a classic problem of managing inflamed tissue in contrast to the non-vital exacerbation which is focused on the management of infection. The image on the left shows what a pulp looks like with a severe pulpitis. The right side of that tissue in the canal is acutely inflamed. To the left, we see virtually normal tissue. It is a dynamic situation. We cannot predict how long the tooth will remain in this condition or will it become more acute and ultimately necrotic. How do we determine the cause of a flare-up? This model of the tooth and the periodontal ligament and the surrounding bone is important in our understanding. Gently tapping that tooth may elicit acute pain. That is an indication that the inflammatory process has left the root canal and is now into the periodontal membrane. We call that condition pericementitis. It is extraordinarily painful. And if the patient has that situation, Unless we do something to relieve the occlusion, it is unlikely that the patient will have relief. Also, from this model, we can look at the thickness of bone overlying both surfaces of the tooth. As we palpate that area and the finger slides up from the gingival third to the apical third, Pain in endodontics generally causes pain in the apical third of the tooth during palpation. However, if the patient has pain in the gingival third during palpation, it is an indication that something else may be going on, such as it could be a periodontal situation. There could be a crack, but certainly it is not a classic endodontic symptom to have pain in the gingival third. Vital exacerbations have a series of factors that are usually associated with them. One is that they are usually iatrogenic. That means that something procedurally has happened to cause the patient to go from an asymptomatic condition to severe pain. Those iatrogenic conditions include the measurement the measurement may have been inaccurately taken, or it may not have been properly recorded, or it may have been estimated. There's a direct line between having a problem and the degree of estimation. The more we are estimating, the more likely it is that the patient will have pain. So while we might say, well, if the instrument is a millimeter off, that we might estimate that, satisfactorily, it becomes increasingly unlikely that you will have an accurate measurement if you are estimating two, three, or four millimeters short or long. The instrumentation itself is an issue. Have you maintained measurement during instrumentation? Have you gone too far and inadvertently caused a pericementitis? Have you stayed too short and left a portion of vital tissue remaining? 
obturation of a tooth that is mildly or moderately symptomatic can lead to acute postoperative pain just because of irritation caused by manipulation. You would be well advised not to obturate a tooth until the patient is asymptomatic. The occlusion is another factor. If the patient leaves with a restoration that is slightly high in occlusion, it can be the cause of severe pain. There is good research that indicates that if it is possible, meaning no new restoration present, and you can reduce the occlusion, you would be well advised to do so. Here are our treatment options for exacerbations. A pulpotomy. Pulpotomy has been shown to be a highly effective procedure in treating a tooth with irreversible pulpitis. By clearing the tissue from the pulp chamber of a tooth, that is often sufficient to provide comfort to patients who are in pain. Complete instrumentation or reinstrumentation is often a good approach if tissue has been left behind or shredded due to incomplete instrumentation. We've just discussed the importance of occlusion and not allowing a patient to leave with high occlusion or relieving occlusion whenever possible. Incision and drainage is a possibility, but not in vital cases. There are many anecdotal tales about trephination, but I must say this, that the research that has been published on this subject is not encouraging. And so I would advise against trephination. There are some who say that this is the last resolve after everything else has been tried to bring pain under control. Medication is of course another option and the treatment strategies and how to use medications we will discuss together elsewhere in another segment. One question about taking an analgesic is when should I take it? Now the classic means of prescribing an analgesic is that a patient is told if you have pain then take this medication. Unfortunately that is not the best way to take an analgesic. Pain is caused by the release of mediators. If we wait until those mediators are in place, which usually takes about two hours, we're really playing catch up. It would be a better advised to have that patient take the analgesic immediately after treatment in a preemptive or preventative mode. Please remember that before treating the emergency, the clinician must analyze the biologic cause of the problem. Once the cause is determined, appropriate treatment is readily determined. I hope you find this review to be useful in your approach to intra-visit endodontic emergencies. Thank you and good luck. <laughs>